Find bases for the kernel and range of the following linear transformation T. T is going to go from R3 to R2. T is given by T of X1, X2, X3 is equal to, okay, first entry, X1 plus X2. Second entry, minus 2X1 plus X2 minus X3. So we have a two vector here. First step, I want to write T in matrix vector form. So I'm looking for a two by three matrix A, such that if I multiply it by X1, X2, X3, we recover our original definition for T. We'll have two ways to get that. First way, I just take a look at T, we line up our variables in order, and then we can just read across to get the coefficients. So first row is gonna be one, one, zero. Okay, so there's no X3, so that's coefficient zero. So one, one, zero. Then we read off second row, we'll have minus two, one, minus one. Okay, we could check our work. You just multiply our matrix A times X1, X2, X3, and then you'll see you just get this back. Another way, which is more mechanical, we're gonna take E1, E2, and E3, the standard basis vectors for R3. We'll apply T to those, and that's how we get our columns. So if I take T on E1, which is one, zero, zero, we're gonna get one minus two. So that's column one. If I apply T to E2, so it's zero, one, zero, we're gonna get one, one, and that's column two. And then if I apply T to E3, zero, zero, one, we're gonna get zero minus one. And note, that checks our other method. So if you use either one, you're gonna get the same matrix A. Now, with our matrix A, we have a dictionary. So linear transformation T corresponds to the two by three matrix A. The kernel of T is gonna to correspond to the null space of A. The range of T is gonna to correspond to the span of the columns of A. So we're gonna work on this side to get our answer over here. First, the null space. What's the procedure? We're gonna take A, put it in reduced row echelon form. We're gonna identify each column as either a pivot column or a non-pivot column. There are gonna be variables that go with each column. So if you're in a pivot column, you're gonna be a dependent variable. If you're not, you're an independent variable. Then we'll take a look at the equations and we'll find a way to get our basis. So first, reduced row echelon form. So we have A like this, Okay, the way we assign our variables, x1, x2, x3. Now, I want to go to reduce row echelon form. So the first thing I want is a one up here, and we have that. Then I want a zero in this spot. So we're gonna take row two and add two times row one. That's gonna give me zero, three, minus one. Then I want to put a one here. So we're gonna divide row two by three, which gives me the row zero, one, minus one third. And then finally, okay, we're in row echelon form. If we want reduced, I have to get rid of the one above this pivot. So I'm just gonna take row one, subtract off row two. So then row one becomes one, zero, one third. Now, we identify the pivots, the variables that go with them. So we'll have X1 and X2 are dependent. X3 is gonna be independent. I write out my equations. So I'll have x1 plus a third x3 is zero, x2 minus a third x3 is zero, and then I can push the x3s to the other side. So whenever you pick an x3, you're automatically picking x1 and x2 also. All right, now note we only have one independent variable, so we're only gonna get one basis vector. And I'll get that by letting x3 be equal to one. So the basis vector that we get is gonna be minus a third, one third one. It's gonna be the basis of our null space, but it's also gonna be the basis for the kernel of T. So let's check. If I apply T to minus one third, one third one, what comes out? Well, we have X1 plus X2, so it's gonna be minus a third plus a third gives me a zero. And then I'm gonna have minus two X1 plus X2 minus X3. That's also gonna give me a zero. So our basis vector is definitely in the kernel of T. It produces a zero when we apply T. 
Next step, I want basis for the range of T. So we're looking for a basis for the span of the columns of A. What's the role here? Well, you only need row echelon form. You identify your pivot columns, and then you just take the corresponding columns from the original matrix. So our pivots are in columns one and two. So I'm gonna use the vectors one minus two and one, one. So that's gonna be a basis for the range of T. Note that's also gonna be a basis for R2. So T is gonna be an R2 map. It hits everything in R2. Okay, so that's our answer. Now, if we wanna check our work, we have the rank formula. That says the dimension of your domain vector space is gonna be equal to the dimension of the kernel of T plus the dimension of the range of T. So we have dimension of the kernel is equal to one. We only have one basis vector. Dimension of the range of T is gonna be two because we have two basis vectors. So I have one plus two, and it's gonna be equal to the dimension of R3, which is equal to three. So our check works.